Neil Before Blog presents Neil Before Pod. Hello, and welcome to Neil Before Pod interviews. I'm your host, Craig, and I recently had the pleasure of talking to Megan Fitzmartin, the writer of the latest DC animated movie, Justice League X Ruby Superheroes and Huntsmen Part 1. The conversation covers crossing over properties, respecting the audience, and writing the anime Justice League. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Hi, Megan. How are you doing? Hello, Craig. I'm well. How are you? How's Edinburgh? I'm doing good. Yeah, Edinburgh's good. It's very rainy at the moment, but that's nothing new. It always is. Oh, that's true. That's delightful. Although the last couple of times I've been in Edinburgh, it's not rained, and I've been very annoyed about it. (laughs) Well, at least you can get outside without being wet, so that's an advantage. That's very true. (laughs) <laughs> so this project, this interesting project, how did you come to be involved in it and become the writer? I worked on a movie for Warner Brothers in DC before. It was a movie called Justice Society World War II. And I had a blast working on that. I co-wrote it with Jeremy Adams, who I adore. So I had some practice working in the, the Warner Brothers DC world. And then in... December of 2020, Jim Krieg, who was my producer on Justice Society World War II, reached out and was like, hey, do you know Ruby? And I had heard of Ruby at the time, but I hadn't gotten into it yet because I knew that it would overwhelm and become my whole life. And so I was like, (laughs) give me two weeks and I'll know everything. And it was perfect because it was over the holiday break. So I basically, while I was quarantining so that I could see my family for Christmas, binged all of Ruby and like I knew, fell deeply in love with it. And so gave Jim a ring back and was like, yep, I'm obsessed. I love this. I know everything (laughs) about it. Now let's do it. And then we were able to make something that I'm really proud of. Cool. From my point of view, I know nothing about Ruby before watching this film, so I was completely new to that. But obviously, I know Mm -hmm. not obviously, but I know a lot about the Justice League side of things. So, as a writer, how did you approach crossing over these two properties, bearing in mind that anyone watching it might not know an awful lot about either side of it? Very carefully, I am so grateful for the team that I worked with in DC and Rooster Teeth and Warner Brothers, everybody on those teams, we all knew that many of the viewers would be in a similar position that you are of like, I know Justice League, but I maybe don't know Ruby that well. And so that was part of the mission as well in telling the story. But there's a lot of really beautiful moments and really cool things about Ruby and wanting to be able to express and say, guys, come and join. This is a really cool space. And using characters that we know and love in the DC stable to introduce others to the Ruby characters, I think was an important piece of constructing that story. Yeah, I really like the clever approach to pairing them up almost, as in this person will connect better with Batman, this person will connect better with Green Lantern and so on to give you that in, give them that connection point. Yeah, exactly. You did some interesting things with perspective as well. You start off by having the characters be as disoriented as the viewer, or the Justice League characters anyway, as in thrown into the situation with no idea what's going on and then altering the focus throughout. Can you talk a bit about that as an approach to building this story? I would like to say it was all very clever because I thought about it and mulled over. But the truth of the matter is I just sat down and thought, okay, so pretend I'm watching this movie now. What would I see? That is how I do a lot of my writing. It's just sort of thinking, all right, well, if I'm watching the episode, what does the episode look like? So it's sort of like it's already written, but I have to write it. And so it came to be that way whenever I started to get into doing the premise and the outline for it the immediate thing I saw was that Superman finds himself in the middle of this fight and has to figure out what's going on in this world and then yeah in retrospect that worked out really well because I think that that does sort of give us an end to also being disoriented in a world that we don't know very well yeah the viewer just thinking well I was certainly thinking what is going on here because I was expecting a little bit of a build-up to crossing these things over but no you're just thrown right in i quite liked it i liked just yeah. trying to play catch up as i was going good i like to believe that my viewer is as intelligent as i am we'll figure it out we've all watched a lot of sci-fi at this point we know what the rules are we can catch up everybody can hang yeah what was it like to write anime versions of justice league characters obviously you're drawing on the comic that this film is i would say loosely based on there's quite a lot of changes 
from what I can see. Yeah, it was really fun. Honestly, that was one of the things that I was most excited about when we ended up seeing the character designs and things. I grew up with these characters. I know what they look like, but to see Justice League with a little bit of an anime look to them and the anime design to them, oh, it was candy. It was so exciting. It definitely looks really cool. It doesn't look like any other DC project out there, that's for sure. And it stands yep, out for that that's reason. that's true. How did you get in the headspace of writing anime in general? I imagine that must have been a bit of a challenge to adapt to that style of storytelling. I've been an anime fan. I grew up watching sort of the off-cycle anime, certainly. Like, I watched a lot of the Toonami stuff that was on Cartoon Network. So I've been aware of anime and I've watched anime and... I would say that it's not so much that anime is a different style, it's that every single show has its own style. So more so getting into the voice of Ruby and the voice of, not just the character, but the show of Ruby and how do they present things and express information and things like that. And I work closely with the Rooster Teeth team as well as the Ruby team. So Carrie and Eddie were both incredibly helpful whenever it came to, oh, well, we would probably do it a little bit more like this, or we would say it a little bit more like that. They were helpful guides into the world and making sure that I was able to capture it and do it justice, to be honest. And this is billed as a part one. So do you have input into part two as well? Or are you writing that one? I don't know what I can say about part two, to be <laughs> honest. So I shan't, but I'm, I'm excited about it nonetheless. If I were to guess, I would guess that the Ruby characters appear in the Justice League world, but that's just speculation on my part. Who amongst us can say? <laughs> certainly not I. Well, I would certainly never get you to incriminate yourself by giving me <laughs> exclusive spoilers of what's coming next. Of course. Listen, I know that Gary will pull the plug immediately, so I'm doing it both a favor. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I do just have to mention as an aside, it's nothing to do with this project, but I noticed you wrote a couple of episodes of Supernatural, and I'm a diehard Supernatural fan. I watched it for the entirety of its runs. Amazing! Oh, yay! I'm delighted. So, yeah, well done on that. Thank you. I started working on the show in 2016 for season 12, and ended up becoming a staff writer in the last season and wrote a couple episodes for it. It was a dream. It truly was such a wonderful joy and a uh, thing that I hold very dearly. It's certainly a moment in television, that's for sure. <laughs> that's very true. A very long moment, a 15-year moment, to be honest. <laughs> Quite a chunk of my life spent watching that show. I don't mind admitting that. Oh, yeah. I like to remind some of the writers on the show that that show came out when I was in high school, and I do remember <laughs> watching it in high school, and now I work on it, and they were like, all right, we don't need this. We don't need to. <laughs> So just on the notion of crossovers, what other properties would you like to cross over DC characters with? Oh, goodness. My brain immediately, hmm, here's one. Here's two, actually. So I've gotten very into Star Trek over the pandemic. I started to like really get into Star Trek. I would love nothing more than to combine those two properties of Star Trek and DC. There's no way that those two owners would allow that. But yet here we are. I would love it. There was a comic with Captain Kirk teaming up with the Green Lantern Corps at one point. Oh, that's right. Well, that could happen. Oh, man. It's been a minute. See, there you go. But also, I would love nothing more than for Johnny Quest to come along somehow, some way into the DC universe. I think that'd be really dope. It's all possible. Hopefully, you'll get to combine two other things. It's all possible. Multiverses are real, man. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much for your time. It's been great talking to you about this film. Absolutely. All the best with it. I hope it goes really well. And I look forward to part two, seeing what madness comes out of that. Thank you so much. I enjoyed talking to you and I look forward to part two as well. Well, thank you for your time. That was my interview with Megan Fitzmartin. I wish her the very best for all future projects. If you like what you heard, then please do hit subscribe on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere you get your podcasts. We'd love if you would leave a five-star rating and review. If you want to discuss this interview... DC in general, or anything else, then you can contact us on Twitter or Facebook under Neil Before Blog, or leave a comment on neilbeforeblog.co.uk. For more interviews, a monthly news podcast, and deep dive analytical content about your favourite nerdy things, join us on Neil Before Pod.